Welcome to So and So brought to you by Bernina Made to Create. I'm Meg Goodman, and you're about to enjoy a casual conversation with a special member of the Sewist and Quilting community. A conversation about how they got started, what inspires them, what excites them, and their connection to this community. Our guest today is Nick Varios, whom we had the opportunity to talk with in person during the Sewing and Stitchery Expo 2023 held in Puyallup, Washington. Born in St. Louis and raised in Caracas, Venezuela, Nick knew at an early age that he loved fashion design. Moving back to the States when he was 10, Nick attended high school in San Francisco and graduated from the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. Nick's designs have been worn by Beyonce, Katy Perry, Heidi Klum, Marley Matlin, and Carrie Underwood. He's conducted numerous red carpet interviews and is well known for his work on Project Runway. Our conversation with Nick is intimate, honest, and forthcoming as he shares how he got to where he is, who inspires him, and shares with us who he really is. Welcome to So and So. It's exciting to have you join us today. I'm so excited. It's it's my pleasure to be here. And we are at the Stitchery and Sewing Expo in Puyallup, Washington. Oh my and- God. I'm <laughs> so happy to be here because I get to layer the weather. I love it. It's like natural air conditioning. And I love to wear the coat. See, I'm from Southern California, LA. I never get to open my coat closet, but this time I packed some coats. You you were smart. You planned ahead because the weather has changed from hour to hour here. Yes. Um, now, we have a lot to talk about. You are a, a busy human being. You do Project Runway. You do red carpet work. You are a designer. Let's wind the clock back. How did all of this start for you? Oh, my goodness. You know, I love this. It's the, the Sew and Sew podcast, and I love to sew. Um, you know, but originally how it all started for me is um, I always loved to draw. So drawing for me was my passion. As a little boy, I just always drew. I grew up in South America, in Venezuela. My dad was a diplomat. He worked for the State Department. and He was based in Caracas. And my mom was a diplomat's wife. <laughs> and so they would always go to the diplomatic parties. Um, uh, I'm going to age myself. This is the seventies. And so I always say my mom was JLo before JLo. And so she was always wearing the, you know, chiffon caftans and the big bouffant and the turquoise earrings. And I would always, before they went to the parties, I would always be drawing them and their outfits while I was on the floor, just Mm -hmm. drawing them. And so that's what I would draw. And, um, I was just a weird boy because I wouldn't necessarily be drawing airplanes or like something of that sort, it would always come out as women in dresses. <laughs> you were a designer before you be- even knew you were a designer. Knew. Right. I didn't even know that didn't come to effect. It's just like, I was, I just like to draw and I just like to draw fashion. Um, and, and to this day, my mom still has all my notebooks from all those early That's special. Um, days. So it was always special. And that continued on We moved to the States and um, I just continued to draw. And for me, it was sort of, it was my hobby. It was an, um, uh, it was a way for me to just go into another world uh, from high school. Cause I, I felt odd, you know, as a kid, because I loved, you know, drawing women in fashion Mm -hmm. and not doing what normal guys would want to do. And so then I would always go home and, and just go into my own little world and pretend I was a fashion designer and I would draw collections. Um, And my mom God bless the moms. Let me just say it right now. I love the moms. Um, She supported this quote unquote hobby of mine because she, there would always be a new drawing book. There would always be like new Prismacolor pencils. Mm -hmm. And so she was always, there were always there. I don't know what I, I didn't even think about it. Like, you know, like, you know, does she own stock in, in office depot or, you know, like, or she should have, or she should have. (laughs) But it was always there. And of course, later on in the years and when I became successful, you know, it's like my mother says, you know, she just knew that she was there just planting the seed. Who was your mentor? Oh, my God, my mentor. Uh, You know, I have to say, uh, once I got to uh, fashion school and uh, uh, attending college, uh, I think that uh, my mentor really was uh, the director of the fashion program. Because I think she really saw in me 
a lot, um, a lot of potential and uh, really sort of nurtured that. So for sure, her name is Mary Stevens. Um, she passed away a while back. Um, but um, yeah, she was my mentor. And in fact, uh, she hand knitted me some gorgeous, long, long wool scarves, mm. hand knit. And I brought one of them with me on this trip. Oh, well, that's awesome. <laughs> that's very special. Yeah. Now you were saying when you became a success, when was that moment? When did you know that you were a success? What did that look like for you? Oh, that's a, a very good question. Um, you know, I, I think that I think one of the, m- the main moments was when uh, um, I'd been working very hard in the industry. I, you know, uh, after I graduated, you know, graduating from fashion school, I actually went to UCLA first and studied political science because I thought I could be a fashionable diplomat. And I thought it would be a, 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 a more, um, I would say, better job to say, you know, especially to my dad, my Greek dad, like, oh, I'm going to become a, 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 you know, um, a diplomat just like him, uh, as opposed to like, you know, your one and only son wants to be a fashion designer. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I went to UCLA. Um, And then I went to fashion school and then uh, worked probably, I would say, a little over 10 years in the industry doing all the jobs that Mm -hmm. you're supposed to do, internships, assistant designer. And every, um, even in all the jobs, I would come home and I would sew and I would make my own, like not my own, but I would make dresses Mm -hmm. and and things like designs. I would pretend like I had my own line. Nice. And by the 10th year, obviously, I accrued about 30 garments. So one big store from New York, Henry Bendel, came out to mm-hmm. Los Angeles looking for new talent. And I lied. Now, I am not telling people to do this, so please don't do this. I lied to my boss, who I worked with uh, in the design company, and said I had a dentist appointment. And so I went to the casting for this huge you know, store from New York, Henry Bendel, looking for new talent. Mm-hmm. And I brought some of those dresses that I'd been sewing and making all these years. They bought my line mm. and that was it. That and was so at moment. that moment, that was probably one of the first moments where I was like, oh, they like me. They really <laughs> like me. Like, and, and sort of a, um, a stamp of approval that, you know what, like if there was any doubt and there wasn't that this is what I, I have to do and that I want to do. And that was the best dentist appointment of your life. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I still kept my job, you know, but I remember calling my dad. And I'm like, so you might want to call like the Greek mafia because we're going to need some money. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know people. Yeah, it exactly. Is. Yeah. And by the way, whatever money you think you need, you're going to need a lot, lot more. more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's some advice. <laughs> Nick, let's talk about Project Runway. Um, I'm sure our listeners are going to want to know what it's like for you to do the show. Yeah. Maybe share some behind the scenes little scoops for us. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there's, take us there with you. Yeah, there's so much. You know, um, I was teaching fashion, actually, at FITM, which is where I went to school. And, um, and uh, I remember that. Somebody told me, I found out, you know, that Project Runway was coming out to Los Angeles for casting for the second season. This is only the second season. And I remember watching the first season thinking, okay, this is, this is good. They're really showing, you know, how things are done, Mm -hmm. you know, because this is, if you think back, I'm, um, again, I'm aging myself, 2005. This is really the beginning of reality shows. We're talking Mm. real world. Mm -hmm. And, um. So most people would, if you think of reality shows, yeah, you think drama, crying, crazy, hot tub, drunk. <laughs> so when I remember the, that I heard, oh, they're doing a reality show about fashion, all I kept thinking is crazy, drunk, hot tub. I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute. But then when I watched it with mm-hmm. Tim Gunn, I saw that it was the real thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, but not many people watched it. And so, but then um, I went to the casting and I decided if I'm going to do this, I brought, I called one of my friends who was a model and I had already stopped, had my line. So I already, mm-hmm. I think uh, with my partner, David and I, we were in about 150 stores all over the, con- and the country and the world already. But of course we were still struggling, you know, business. Um, and I went, I called one of my models and I said, you have to come with me. And she showed up at my door at eight in the morning and she put on one of my dresses. And then I brought some of my gowns and dresses, my line. And then we went straight to the casting. There was a long line. It was at the standard hotel um, of about 200 people. 
And by the way, my model is six foot two, six foot tall, African American. She looked like she came out of Somalia. Mm. So just Amazonian gorgeous. Um, somebody stopped her and said, Excuse me, who are you? Are you the designer? She goes, No, 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 it's him. Mm-hmm. I was sort of hiding behind her. We were pulled to the front because of her. And she had on one of your and creations. She had one of my, yes. And mm-hmm. by the way, I gave her a day outfit because it was eight in the morning, kids, okay? But this is when you, um, no shoulda, woulda, coulda moment, second no shoulda, woulda, coulda moment. When we got to go upstairs to the antechamber before going to see the judges, she took her clothes off naked, stripped naked, and put on a bias cut silk charmeuse gown from head to toe. Mm-hmm. And she was like, and I said, Amara, that's her name. Mm-hmm. I said, what are you doing? She goes, you only have one moment, honey. And that she was it. She told you. She did. <laughs> she, she told me. She schooled uh-huh. me. We went in. I did my thing, showed my gowns, and Tim Gunn looked at me. The next thing I know, he said, you're in. We love you. Uh, and that was it. Um, you know, to cut a long story short, did the show. Uh, I had a wonderful time. It was a blur. You know, mm-hmm. I think we filmed for maybe five, six weeks. We filmed in New York. And again, this is the second season, guys. So it was very nation, very the beginning of reality shows. Nobody even knew who we were. Mm-hmm. I remember we would walk. We were filming at Parsons and we would walk from Parsons to Mood, go through Times Square area, fat, you know, the Garment Center area. And nobody knew who Tim Gunn was still. Mm-hmm. They didn't know. They didn't know who we were. People, would, you know, tourists would be like, what are you guys filming? You know, and we would be like the commercial. <laughs> um, so things changed drastically when, of course, after our season, it re- the show really took off. Um, many seasons later, I heard they were putting the designers in vans, blacked mm-hmm. out vans. Tim Gunn couldn't go anywhere. Um, it was a scene. But for us, it was, you know, it wasn't that crazy. Um, but I, I had a blast. And, mm-hmm. you know, I ended up fifth. But I felt like I won the show because of what the what came afterwards. I didn't realize how crazy um, the effect of the show, the effect of TV. Um, and to be honest, I was very I was rather naive, which is a wonderful thing. When I did the show, I wanted to show I wanted to take my my our business uh, to a bigger, higher level. Mm -hmm. I wanted women to buy more of our dresses. You know, I wanted more, maybe some, a backer would come up, something like that would happen. Um, Not necessarily did any of that happen, Mm -hmm. but it was funny. Immediately we started getting so many calls. I started getting so many calls and the um, Bravo network, NBC universal started reaching out so much to me, said, Nick, I said, yes, people want you for this. They want you for this. They want you for this. I'm like, don't they want to buy my dresses? They're like, no, but they're going to send you to Italy to cover the Torino Olympics and talk about figure skating. And it's all paid for. And they're paying you a fee. And I said, done. <laughs> but it <laughs> when, was when over can you go? and over and over again. And yeah. I didn't realize that it was a great way to showcase who I am, my name. And then in the end, that also helped me and our brand and actually get me additional clothing lines as well. But it was it was a funny thing. I didn't do the show to be on TV and be a red carpet commentator, but that came sort of as a result of being on the show and, um, you know, being an educator, being a designer, knowing about fashion. Um, and I guess, I, as you can kind of tell, I like to talk. You've Sorry. Got great stories. Now, you just said something. You said you're able to showcase who you are. Yes. Who are you? Oh, my goodness. Um, I am passionate person above all i think being half greek and half latino i'm all that i always say i'm not a 10 i'm a 12 um there's no warm button it's pretty much hot mm-hmm. <laughs> all the time i'm passionate about everything i give 110 percent, and i'm real and um you know i feel that's how i am as as, as a person and in terms of like my clothing line and how I want to dress women. I want women to live themselves to the fullest extent, Mm -hmm. you know, so they can give their 110% and they can show their passion through the fashion. 
Hello, Sewing Bees. It's Sue Avery Pruitt from Suki Sews. You know that dream studio you have in your head with every machine, notion, and accessory you want? We've all got one, and I just designed mine at BerninaSweepstakes.com. And you can design your own too, and then win it. I just had to have space for all my machines, the ones I already owned, and the ones I wanted to add to my studio. Make sure you're in to win Bernina's Dream Studio $100,000 giveaway. Design your own dream studio at BerninaSweepstakes.com. Dream it, design it, win it. You were talking about some of the, the spoils of your, your victories, and, and one of those is you've had gowns worn by Beyonce, Katy Perry, Heidi Klum, uh, Carrie Underwood. You've been featured at the Oscars, Golden Globes, Emmys, Grammys, SAG Awards. Yeah. That's good. That's quite a list. Yes. <laughs> um, what's it like to work with A-list celebrities? Oh, it's, um, and uh, you know, I'm very uh, honored, privileged, and humbled by all that. And again, you know, we were doing our line for years and carried in all these stores and the, the, the celebrities didn't come until Project Runway, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. that was another sort of byproduct of that. Um, and it was really great. Um, it's nerve wracking. When you hear, when the stylists, you know, they hear about you, they contact you and they said, we want to pull some dresses. And then they said, we're, we're, we're the stylist for Katy Perry. And you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> or, you know, or an, an actress and, and, and she's going to the Oscars and we're like, oh my God, oh my God. Um, and um, you are holding your breath. Mm-hmm. until the moment that they actually appear oh my <laughs> because you never know um and so it's amazing when it does when it happens um it's a great bonus for for obviously for your company for press you know for telling people that you've dressed these celebrities um it's 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 just, it's wonderful and you know i have to say as a designer also it helps for myself because a lot of stylists may not now they're getting a little better in terms of having their own tailors and seamstresses or sewers, but since you know David and I both know how to sew, <laughs> and we know how to fit, and we mm-hmm. know how to tailor, that a lot of times we sort of were like a one stop shop. We're like, you know, the stylist would then come back and said, "Yes, Katy Perry wants to wear this, but can you can you take this in? Can you do this? Can you do?" And I'm like, "Yeah, done. Come back tomorrow." You know, and and so that's a bonus of being a designer. By the way, so listen to that, kids. So if you go to fashion school, learn how to sew. And it also helps if you like get a Bernina machine before going to fashion school, because then like you are like 10 steps ahead, by the way. Um, but um, yes, yeah, so that that helped a lot. But dressing celebrities was was quite great. And then, in fact, because of that, um, uh, I was able to get uh, a line on QVC. Mm-hmm. HSN. So then we went from the high to the, you know, I want to say high, low. It's not high, low, but reaching, you know, you have the red carpet, but then reaching the real women, you know, the mass market. Um, and so I especially loved that part, but again, it wouldn't have happened unless it, you know, my, my brand, my name had an, you know, established sort of, um, you know, celebrity quotient to it. You know, they said celebrity designer, you know, <laughs> and you're like, that's I'm me. Like, I guess that's me. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, what's special, Nick is it, it seems like this never gets old for you. You don't take it for granted. There's a wonder in your voice when all of this stuff continues to happen for you. Yeah, it's, it's true. You know, I, uh, again, you know, the, the whole time after I graduated from design school and I worked so much, I immediately went to work. So I, I just, I didn't know what else to do. And I also just, I needed to pay the rent and, um, um, you know, and, and pay back my parents for helping me out mm-hmm. with helping with college and um, the Greek mafia. Yeah, oh, yeah, the out, Greek, right? oh, then the uh-huh. Greek mafia right, part. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, and so then really I'm, I'm kidding about the Greek mafia. <laughs> 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 um, so then, um, yeah, so I worked really hard and I remember for a while then I always felt like, you know, when am I going to get the good luck tickets? Because I saw around me a lot of other sort of friends and people like, get up in the, in the design world, like become like designer here or end up in Italy or, Mm -hmm. and I was still like, just sort of working my little butt off, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and this is before again, the, the Henry Bendel story. So I just felt like, Oh, you know, where, where where's this going to lead? Sure. And, um, I think that, I think that that still is with me, that sort of mentality to work hard. And, And I always say now that because of what's happened to me and all these things, 
uh, Project Runway, the celebrity dressing, our line, the successes, all that, um, that I finally got the good luck ticket. You know, like I always felt like, you know, when God was giving out the good luck ticket, I must have been in the bathroom in the bar. <laughs> like, where was I? <laughs> but you but got yours. I got mine. Yeah. Nick, what inspires you? Oh, my gosh. What inspires Life, mm-hmm. travel. I'm sure that something from this trip here in Washington is going to inspire me. The quilting, the prints, the fabrics. Something is going to, I'm always inspired. I think, um, yeah, definitely, uh, fa- I think fashion, fabric. Um, strong, powerful women, strong, powerful human beings, um, architecture. Um, yeah, all of that, all of that is, is really inspiring me. Get out guys, get out and be inspired, you know, and find moments, you know, find in this, in this, I tell this, especially to our design students, you have to find your voice. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of times, you know, they just don't know it, you know, and find inspiration. You know, they always talk about, oh, I'm inspired by this. I'm inspired by that. You know, I said, you know, you tell me about that bench that you used to sit on when you were eight mm-hmm. under that tree and draw. Mm-hmm. And if you didn't make it up, <laughs> but give me sure. that moment. You know, it's my yeah. moment of when I was a little boy drawing on the floor in Caracas, mm-hmm. drawing my mom. Like, and there, I know that every kid, every person, every um, aspiring designer. Um, so where they, you have those moments and, um, find it because you'll always go back to that moment. And I think to this day, I'm still that little boy laying on the cold floor in Caracas, Venezuela, drawing my mom, God bless her. She's 88 and Mm. um, she's in Fort Lauderdale and she is still with me and she is still sending me those damn notebooks of my <laughs> perfect not cute sketches mm-hmm. when I was four. Like she just keeps finding them and finding them. <laughs> nothing like a mom. And nothing right? like a mom. And you know, now that we have social media and Instagram, I guess I'm going to have to start posting them sketches. We'll look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned that, that we're in Washington um, and we're here for the sewing and stitchery expo for those who couldn't be here yeah. to, to see this. <gasps> what are you experiencing? Oh, it is. Um, oh my God. It's I, I, I candy, I guess yeah. is, is two yeah. words that I would say, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, Joe Vicarelli from French European would always say for years, Nick, you got to come out, Nick, you got to come out. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll try. I'll try. And he's like, no, it's crazy. Um, I have to say that he did not describe it enough Mm -hmm. uh you know you walk in and it's just i mean especially if you love to sew if you love quilting if you love fabrics i'm i love you know as a designer fabrics are so inspiring obviously Mm -hmm. and um love to sew we still still to this day we're doing some um a little inside dish we're actually doing some dresses some gowns for the oscars and uh both david and myself i'm making the pattern cutting the dress and david is sewing them so yes, we still make so create our own gowns, mm-hmm. um, especially when we can. You know, when we sure. love, I do all the muslins, so we still do that. And so coming here to the sewing and stitchery expo to see the fabrics, to see um, just everything. I mean, I I'm not a quilter myself, but it's just fascinating. I mean, every other uh, booth, I'm like, oh my god, what's that? Oh my god, what's that? Oh my god, what's that? And it's just like it seems like like thousands and thousands of people um you know it's 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 pretty incredible it really is so to me it's been it's been um it's been great to see this yeah for sure like i say it's if you if you love all that it is definitely um uh your tribe right here (laughs) it's a tribe a community it's it's prevalent yeah yeah Um, i mean and i'm so happy um you know because i really didn't realize mm -hmm. to the extent and again, coming from the point of view of a sewer, mm-hmm. how naive was I? I didn't realize that there was this whole big tribe. Um, you know, I just thought it was sort of like just us and we were sort of like, like hiding, mm-hmm. <laughs> just sewing away. Um, and, but it's, 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 it, we're, we're here and we're, you know, and sort of just like, it's, it feels like a, a nice, like, a, like I keep saying, like a tribe, like a family here. And you're part of that family. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. It's exciting. I've already bought so much stuff here. So I'm, um, it's, yeah, I'm going to have to keep my wallet uh, in <laughs> my bag because, um, yeah, it can get a little scary here with the fabrics. I've some, seen some Japanese fabrics, some obis, and um, I've already bought scarves. And, um, but beyond that, I might go home with like 10 scissors. I think TSA is going to stop me. <laughs> they, they'll, they'll look at you twice. I know. Now you're doing a special Friday night live show this evening. What can we expect? Oh, wow. Well, um, I'm very excited to, to, to be, I'm honored to be the special guest for Friday night live. And, uh, so I'll be talking about my um, how I got to where I got <laughs> and, you know, my passion for fashion, um, and how I started loving fashion and how I got to be a fashion designer, the path that I went through and, you know, sort of giving my, 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 uh, no shoulda, woulda, coulda, um, you know, tidbits and advice and, and, you know, talking about the red carpet, obviously talking about project runway, giving a little inside dish, you know, now I'm a consulting producer for the show. So I'm behind the scenes, which is a whole other mm -hmm. can of worms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, when all of a sudden I get a call in my ear that the uh, serger broke, guess who has to step oh, in? <laughs> and, you know, maybe several seasons ago, I didn't know how to rethread a serger. And now I kind of can, but oh, Lordy. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to be talking about that. But then also the uh, we have to put some Swarovski crystals on the event. So uh, we've brought about 10 of our one of a kind custom Nikolaiki uh, red carpet gowns uh, for the show. And in fact, some of them have been worn by a celebrity. So you might see a dress worn by the one and only Katy Perry. Nice. Nikolaiki. Yes. You mentioned that. Tell us about that. Nikolaiki. So when I said, you know, when Henry Bendel came and they wanted to know what was the name of our brand. <laughs> and so I had to come up with a label. <laughs> and um, we had a friend that was an attorney. And, and then I talked to some people and they said, you know, you should, as much as you want to name it your name, you shouldn't. There's many, there's a lot of history with designers who've got, who've got had their name taken away, their label, their brand. Oh, they sure. can't even use their name anymore. Sure. And so then I thought, oh, what's good? And I literally, I called my dad. Um, and he said, how about Nikolaiki? I said, oh, and in case you don't know what that means, it means little Nick in Greek. That's great. And that's what my dad used to call me when I was young. And I said, Nikolaiki, oh, that sounds exotic. I love it. I love it. You know, it sounds mm -hmm. European, you know, who knows? And I said, perfect. So that's how the, the name of the label came about. And um, yeah, and that's what it means. Little Nick in Greek. And so that is the name of our uh, high end evening gown collection. And that's perfect because that refers back to that little boy sketching <gasps> under the tree. Look at you. How about I, you know, it seems perfect. Now I know why they pay you the big bucks, <laughs> my dear. Now I know why too. <laughs> <laughs> um, any uh, experiences on the red carpet that you can share with us? Oh, wow. Experiences on the red carpet. Um, well, personally, um, I um, haven't had many of my own. I mean, I, you know, I've attended events, but for our gowns, our dresses, thank goodness, nothing, no, none of our gowns have ever ripped um, or anything like that has ever happened on the red carpet. Um, you know, but things that you can't take care of is the wrinkling, mm -hmm. you know, when a star is sitting on the limousine for an hour and then they show up on there, there's no steamer waiting for them you know? <laughs> and so then all of a sudden the photos come up and then, you know, you see the ring and you wish they weren't there, mm -hmm. but that's the beauty of iPhone and apps. Now mm -hmm. you can just clean out those wrinkles. <laughs> that's beautiful. Um, so yeah, so I've had really, uh, thank goodness I haven't had, uh, many, uh, negative, uh, red carpet experiences. that mostly have been positive. Um, I always enjoy uh, you know, when I do red carpet commentating, enjoy the Oscars, the Emmys, those mm -hmm. are always fun. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been on the other end where I've had to like interview them for the red carpet mm -hmm. and that is madness guys. So I can give you inside dish. I mean, you're packed like sardines. So those reporters who are pulling the microphone yeah, on them, yeah. you, you are just arm to arm. There's no room and you to get their attention. Um, and it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. It's pretty crazy in that, in those red carpet instances. Yeah, for sure. Nick, what's next for you? What's your dream? Oh my goodness. Oh, that's a great question. I, 
Um, what's next for me? I think just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, especially at my age, I think just, um, you know, keep, uh, making gowns, dresses, keep educating. I think I'm, I'm deep down. I'm also an educator by heart. So as being the co-chair of fashion design at FITM, um, I sort of get to inspire the future Nicks and mm-hmm. Nikitas <laughs> mm-hmm. and tell them, you know, that to find their passion, to find their voice. And so for me, I think what's next is beyond the, the making clothes or sewing or is in inspiring the next generation mm-hmm. and, and, and giving my passion to them. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel it wouldn't be wasting, wasted. Um, so just giving that passion, inspiring them, pushing them, um, you know, to be what they can in, in this day and age more so now especially for the creatives we need you know we need more voices out there we need more creativity Mm -hmm. um you know the fashion world is starving for it you know we hear from even companies like adidas or adidas you know like you just think of, of of joggers and hoodies but do you know who they hire it's that kid who shows up with to you know with a portfolio showing them a hoodie from here to brooklyn Mm mm-hmm they don't want to see another basic hoodie, mm-hmm. y'all. They don't want to see another T-shirt. Yeah. Don't draw that. They want to see, take me somewhere else. And so we want to push those creatives to take them somewhere else. It's, it's the same thing. Like why, you know, if you're interviewing for a chemical engineering job or rocket scientist or this, it's like, okay, what would dream? Right. Dream. And I know as silly and, you know, useless as people think fashion is, it's still, we still, we have to take you somewhere else. You know, we have to make you dream. Fashion is so inspiring. Clothing is so inspiring. It could transform you. It can change you. It gives you a purpose to get dressed. Obviously you need it. Otherwise we'd be naked, but you know, you can be somebody who you want to be. You mm-hmm. can pretend to be someone else, you know, um, with clothing. And so it is, it's just in, in, again, the world is starving for the creatives. So, if you're a creative person out there, go knock their socks off with your creativity. Last question. Is there a question I didn't ask you that you wish I had? Wow. You're good. Oh, uh, did you bring an umbrella to Washington? <laughs> <laughs> I should have. But we all have hoods on our jackets. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's <go>. true. <laughs> there you go. Nick, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure and I can't believe it's done. Are you sure you don't want to like keep me around for longer? You know, I'm having a great time, but I know <laughs> that there's a lot of places people standing behind you need to take you to. So okay. can you point me to a like a really cool Bernina sewing machine so I can like make something? Absolutely. Thank you. We can do that. Thanks, Nick. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Our thanks to Nick for his time and candid conversation about his truly fascinating and inspirational life, his work, and his dreams. We'll certainly be looking forward to seeing many more of his wonderful creations. And there you have it. Another story about someone just like you. Someone for whom sewing is so much more than a hobby. It's a way of life. It's a connection to something bigger. If you know someone you think has an outstanding story, a story that should be shared on this podcast, please drop me a note to meg at soandsopodcast.com or complete the form on our website. Be sure to subscribe to, review, and rate this podcast on your favorite platform and visit our website soandsopodcast.com for more information about today's and all of our guests. That's S-E-W-A-N-D-S-O podcast.com. And finally, I want to thank Bernina for making this program possible. I'm Meg Goodman, and I look forward to you joining us next time on So-and-So. So-and-so.